In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. What we just heard was that Jesus was beside the lake of Gennesaret. People were everywhere and they were trying to hear him. The fishermen, we were told, were on the shore. And they were washing their nets. So Jesus did the smart thing. He got into Simon Peter's boat and told Peter, put out a little ways. And then he sat in the boat and taught from there. And when he was finished, he told Peter, put out to the deep, let down your nets. Peter, being Peter, looked at Jesus and said, been there, done that, no luck. But then the amazing thing is, Peter says, but if you say so, Upon their return, Peter falls on his knees before Jesus, saying, go away because I am a sinner. Because he was completely amazed at the catch that they had gotten. At that point, Jesus looked at him and said, don't be afraid. From now on, you're going to be catching people. This is a relevant story for the contemporary church. It is a metaphor, and it is both an explanation and a call. It's a metaphor of what a missional church committed to catching people might look like. Now the fascinating thing about Luke's telling of the story is it begins with what is really inappropriate behavior. Luke begins by telling us that the fishermen had been out all night. But they're not in their boats. They're on the shore. They seem to have given up. Because what are they doing on the shore? They're washing their nets. In the Mediterranean world, whether in biblical times or even today, washing your nets is what fishermen do when they had nothing else to do. The primary job of a fisherman is to catch people. Washing the nets is just make work. In this story, we see two very different churches. The fishermen at the start of the story represent the maintenance church, the maintenance model, certainly of mainline churches. The members of the maintenance church have left their boats and they are busy washing nets. They've abandoned evangelism and they are lost in disputes about issues of internal concern. And the fish go uncaught. 
What we hear in the story is Jesus says to Peter, put out to the deep. Get away from the shore. Get away from the safety and the calm of the shallows. Move into the deep water where the fish are likely to be caught. Now we all know that deep water is a symbol of uncertainty, of the unknown, of danger. In exchanging the relative safety of the shore, of the shallows, for the deep, the fishermen invariably are putting themselves in jeopardy. They're taking a chance on the unpredictable encounters with the forces that are beyond their control. Be it the wind, be it the fish, be it their own abilities. On the other hand, the missional church is always in the deep water. It is always at risk. It is continually taking chances. Taking chances as it tries to carry the gospel to the unchurched in words and ways that they can understand. The maintenance church keeps its feet on the shore, unwilling to risk, unwilling to change, or to encounter God in the deep waters of the unchurched. Instead, the maintenance church is just washing its nets. On the other hand, as we're told in the story, Peter listens to Jesus, and he does as he is told. That's because the missional church lives in obedience to the Great Commission, to the Great Commandment. Despite doubts, the missional church enters the deep water, just as Peter did. Peter, in search of fish, the missional church in search of disciples. The missional church, like Peter, says to the Lord, if you say so, I will let down my nets. The maintenance church is consumed by itself, by its numbers, by its money, or lack thereof. It resists the challenge to build and strengthen the body of Christ. The maintenance church disobeys God, especially when it says things like, we've always done it this way. When it says that, the maintenance church is left behind to wither. Why? Because the Lord is in the boat. The Lord is in the boat that goes out to the deep where the fish will be caught. The Lord is not on the shore. When Peter obeys Jesus, his reward is a great catch. Not because he's a great fisherman. He has a great catch because God is with him. He has a great catch because he obeyed God. So how does one move from a maintenance church to a missional church? Four things. You invite Jesus into your boat. You admit your own efforts have failed. You obey what Jesus has told you to do. And you expect Jesus to turn things around. 
So you invite Jesus into your boat. That means you invite him into every situation. God wants to bless your efforts, our efforts. But that means we have to give our efforts over to him. Secondly, our efforts have failed at times. And there are a number of reasons why they've failed. One is our arrogance. We're so quick to say, I know it all. I've never said that, but we are very quick to say, I know it all. Our efforts fail because of our disobedience. We ignore God's commands. We doubt. We say, can, we re can he really do this? And actually, what we tend to say is, can we really do this? Not, can he really do this? And we get discouraged. Why? Because we give up too soon. The third thing is we're called to obey what Jesus says to us. What did Peter say? Because you said so, Lord. Peter gave Jesus his unquestioned allegiance. He didn't argue. He didn't say, wait a minute, I am the fishing pro. See, that's what we do. What has God told you to do where he has asked for your allegiance but you are delaying? Where has God said to you, I want you to accept my son as your savior. Or where has God said to you, I want you to be baptized. Or I want you to join my body, the church, formally. Or I want you to tithe. Or where has he said, I want you to forgive that person who hurt you? But your answer was no. Obedience always involves risk because it requires our allegiance to the one whom we would obey. Jesus said, launch into the deep. That's where the big fish are. Not in the shallows, but yet, how many folks want to live in the shallows? When they do, their lives become superficial. They think they are living but they are just in the shallows. When God says, launch out into the deep, go for it, take that risk. I have a plan for you, even if it doesn't make sense. Why don't we launch? Why do we have a failure to launch? Because it's scary. We think it is safer in the shallows. There's gonna, there are no big waves in the shallows to swamp the boat. The truth is, we're really afraid to do what God is calling us to do. Obeying Jesus, even when it doesn't make sense, is probably the most difficult and most frightening thing you and I will ever do. 
but it's also the most rewarding. And then the fourth thing is we, can, we need to expect Jesus to turn it around. In that portion of Luke that we heard, Luke wrote, when the fishermen did as Jesus said, they caught so many fish that their nets began to break. They called partners from the other boats to help. And they filled the other boat with fish. They had more blessing than they could have imagined. Because God wants to bless your lives just like he blessed theirs. He wants to bless it so much that you become a blessing to others. As we know, all of those fishermen did after that experience. The Apostolic Church of the first century did indeed do what Jesus said. They put their nets down in the deep. And they harvested so many disciples that they filled the entire Roman Empire with Christians. How exciting would it be if our nets were beginning to break from so many fish? It can be so. The reward of earnest evangelism is always winning disciples. It was so in the early church. It's the same today in the contemporary church. Like Peter, the missional church today is called to do the legwork to put out into the deep. Not just the clergy, not just the staff, not just the vestry. Everyone in the church is called to put out into the deep. To make disciples needs all of us in the boat. All of us in the deep water. And as we heard in Luke's story, there were so many fish caught that day that they filled a second boat. When Peter sees what happens, we're told he was ashamed and he fell on his knees in front of Jesus. Peter saw the power that was available in putting his allegiance in Jesus. And when he saw that, he also, the mirror turned back on him, where he saw the wickedness of his own disbelief, his own sin. He put his allegiance in Jesus. There's a reason that the contemporary church does not want to be missional to evangelize. We don't want to see ourselves as God does. We don't want to put our allegiance in his son. We only want to see ourselves the way the ad world defines us. We want to see ourselves as self-centered masters of the universe. In community with only good old me. And when we do that, we keep our allegiance in the shallows. There's no wonder that the maintenance church prefers debating issues to making disciples. Debating issues helps avoid the allegiance question. You don't have to declare your allegiance to Jesus as long as you keep debating issues. They don't also have to confront their own sinfulness. 
the maintenance church is more concerned with the perceived sinfulness of others. Jesus said, do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. We all belong in the missional boat with God. Not on the maintenance shore, washing nets. In the missional boat. We are called to make disciples. We're called to proclaim the good news to the whole of creation. That's our privilege and our obligation. Especially if the mainline church is to survive. It has to be missional. It has to be in obedience to God. Because that's where our deepest joy will be found. That's where we will be, we will feel the awesome love of the eternal God. And in making disciples, we will be remade like Peter. Do not be afraid. Push out into the deep and let down your nets. Amen.